Welcome back to Take a Break. I'm Tim Stanovec in New York. Well, about a week after the deadly siege on the U.S. Capitol, calls are growing for President Trump to face prosecution for inciting the riot. And with the House voting on a second impeachment and Biden's inauguration on the horizon, the big question is, what happens to President Trump when he's no longer President Trump? Here to discuss is Bloomberg News' legal executive editor, Tina Davis. Tina, thanks for being here. Um, the backlash is growing and, and Trump is considering a self-pardon. Um, how have the legal risks to, to President Trump changed between last week and this week? A week is such a long time in a Trump presidency. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing I'll say is, look, we had legal liabilities facing this president even before last week's events. Um, there were already investigations that are ongoing by the Manhattan DA, by the New York uh, State Attorney General, also by the D.C. Attorney General looking into some of the inauguration payments. So he was already facing the real risk of illegal, uh, you know, potential jeopardies there. In addition, uh, he has civil cases that are ongoing. He has a defamation lawsuit against him. He has a couple of defamation lawsuits, actually, plus some fraud charges. So it's kind of a, a par for the course for the president, for a president who's been so heavily litigated, litigated in his lifetime and, and also someone who likes to go to the courts to solve problems. But look, last week changed that a lot. I think what we saw before was it's still an un unresolved question as to whether a sitting president can be charged criminally, but once he leaves office, he will no longer have that veneer of protection. So if it comes to it, the DOJ, the Department of Justice, could begin a federal investigation of what's happened. And they could do that either in Georgia for the phone call with the Secretary of State, which uh, several people have mentioned was, you know, raises some interesting questions about uh, putting pressure on a public official. Uh, there is also the Capitol siege and his role in it, his potential role in it. There is a 1969 Supreme Court opinion, Brandenburg versus Ohio, that has to do, it was actually with a, the leader of a Ku Klux Klan, of the Ku Klux Klan in that state, um, who made some statements um, that were deemed inflammatory in the Supreme Court case, uh, basically set the precedent that you can make inflammatory statements, but you can't make statements that will cause uh, imminent uh, lawlessness. And so that's gonna be kind of the question that prosecutors have to face. And certainly what we've heard at least from the D.C. Attorney General, is that they are not ruling out looking at those issues. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.